Hi and welcome to a Calculus 1 video on implicit differentiation. Alright, before we get to the implicit differentiation examples, let's go ahead and take a look at something that we have seen before. If you were given the equation y equals 10x cubed and asked to find its derivative, we might say something like y prime equals 30x squared. Or the notation could have been dy dx, if you've seen that before, equals 30x squared. Either one of those was considered correct. So that is, in essence, what we're asking you to do with implicit differentiation, but just in a little bit different light here. So you'll notice that on the left-hand side, this equation was explicitly defined for y. What that means is it was an equation y equals, and then the independent variable x was on the other side. Well, now our equations will not necessarily be explicitly defined for y, y is going to be maybe on the left and the right hand side of this equation or anywhere. And so what I need to notice is when I took the derivative of a y, the notation was dy dx. And that's because I took the derivative of y with respect to x because that's the independent variable over there. So anytime we're gonna take the derivative of y, we're gonna write down dy dx. And again, I don't necessarily recommend y prime because that prime symbol starts to look like a one over time and it really will cause you to potentially make some errors. So in order to minimize that and really be able to see our derivative of y's, we're gonna write them as dy dx. So let's take a look. This is just showing examples of expressions. So when we took the derivative with respect to x of x squared, that was just two x. But when we take the derivative with respect to x, here's my x squared is 2x, but when we take the derivative with respect to x of y, that's where we get the dy dx from, okay? And we'll go through these steps as we go through examples. All right, so let's differentiate two of these implicitly, one algebraically and another one where we end up with a numeric answer in the end. All right, so what I can see from this equation is that it is not explicitly defined for y, meaning I, am, I have not solved this equation y equals and nor do I want to. You certainly can and it's just another option or technique for you, but certainly this looks like a pretty simple straightforward equation um, and I'd like to just differentiate from here. So the derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared. I just took the derivative of x, so I guess in your mind you can think of it like this, I just took the derivative of x with respect to x, so I don't need to write that part down. Plus, the derivative of y cubed, well the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared, right, that's its derivative, you just took the derivative of y with respect to x. It's also you applying the chain rule if you think about it because here is y, right, inside those parentheses, if you will, to a power. So I applied the power rule with chain, so times the derivative of what's inside. And then to be honest with you, one of the most missed parts of this whole thing is it doesn't equal 8. Remember, we're differentiating derivative of 8 is 0. I have taken the derivative, but now I should be able to solve for dy dx. So if I have multiple terms with dy dx's, I would want to leave them all on one side of the equal sign, move everything else on the other. So for right now, I will just subtract this 3x squared. Then again, if you had multiple dy dx terms, you would want to factor out that dy dx. And then in order to solve for it, I will divide by whatever I'm multiplying dy dx by, whatever factor that is. So 3y squared, that'll divide to 1. So I get dy dx equals, I will divide those three, so it's negative x squared over y squared. And I would like to take a second here and point out that this derivative looks really tidy, it looks neat, it looks easy to work with, in fact it is, um, and that is my first derivative of y with respect to x. Let me just show you if you rewrote the problem and found its derivative, how complicated it would look. Okay, so here is my equation for y, just rewritten where I explicitly define it 
y equals, right, we are solving that equation for y, then I took the derivative, and so I had to use power rule with chain, and these two are equivalent, but, you know, they really don't look it. So, again, if I want to think about, you know, which algebra is going to get me um, somewhere quicker, maybe I would work with this one. Now, the one thing I will say is the dy dx here on the left does have a y in the equation, but oftentimes you're dealing with a point, which is the coordinate x comma y, so I have both values anyway. All right, let's take a look at number two. Now we're going to differentiate implicitly at this given point, so our answer is going to be a numerical answer or which is equivalent to the slope of the tangent line. So one thing I will say is, you know, again, we say that this is not necessarily true, but all the time, right, this left-hand side, the quantity x plus y cubed, all the time does not equal x cubed plus y cubed. You would have to expand that out. Um, but there are values for x and y that will make that true. That's just the same with every equation. If I say y equals x squared, that's not true for every point out there. It's only true for the points that are on that curve. So again, don't look at this and say, oh, my teachers told me I couldn't do that, right? I know. So if I expand the left-hand side, and you can do that using Pascal's triangle or just multiplying that out, then I can see that I can combine like terms. So I can subtract x cubed from both sides. I can subtract y cubed from both sides. So I have 3x squared y plus 3xy squared equals 0. And I'm going to stop here because what I want to make sure you do not do when I'm just trying to rewrite this equation is I want to make sure you don't divide by a variable. So I understand that, you know, the idea might be, oh, I want to divide by x, I want to divide by 3, I want to divide by y. You can divide by 3, but don't divide by variables because you're changing your domain, you're changing some pieces of your original function, so leave it alone. So I'm going to do the derivative from here, and I'm going to leave the 3 because sometimes that can cause us to make an error, so I'm going to leave it in, but certainly you could, if you wish, divide by 3 um, and simplify that a little bit more. But we're going to leave the 3 in for now, and you can see it'll come out in the end anyway. So I'm going to use product rule here. 3x squared will be my first factor. y will be my second. So the derivative of 3x squared is 6x, and I will leave y alone. Plus, now I will leave 3x squared alone, and the derivative of y is dy dx. Again, any time you take the derivative of a y, it's a dy dx. Plus, derivative of my first factor, I do have product rule over here as well in my second term. So derivative of 3x is 3, and I will copy down y squared. Even though this 3y squared term has a y in it, I did not do the derivative there of the y. So it does not have a dy dx. But plus, once you carry down that 3x, now I'm doing the derivative of y squared, which is 2y, and I just did the derivative of y with respect to x derivative of 0 is 0. Please don't also leave things like 3x2y. We know that that is 6xy, so I will rewrite, rewrite that. I will leave my dy dx terms on the left, and so I will immediately factor it out because everything on the left is going to have a dy dx factor in it, and I will factor it out. So that will be this 3x squared, and I'm going to rewrite that second term there with the dy dx as 6xy. Then I need to move the other two terms to the other side of the equal sign, so I will subtract 6xy, and I will subtract 3y squared. Then you divide. You're solving for dy dx, right? So I want to divide by that 3x squared plus 6xy factor. And so if I wanted dy dx in algebraic form, here it is, okay? 
Now, this problem does not ask me for dy, dx in algebraic form, but if it did, that would be one answer. You can also probably see how that factor of 3 could be removed. So you could also have negative 2xy minus y squared over x squared plus 2xy. And you can factor a y out of the top and an x out of the bottom, but I don't know that that's really going to change anything all that much. So either one of those two would be equivalent. But I was asked for the derivative at a point, and the point was negative 1, 1. So I could certainly put negative 1, 1 into that green one or that green one that I just highlighted, but I could also go all the way back up there. My first step where I found the derivative. So I'll show you they all look the same. So if I put a negative 1 in for x, so I'm going to say dy dx at negative 1, 1. Okay, so this will be dy dx equals negative 6x, which is negative 1, y, which is 1, minus 3y squared all over, again, I'm going to put it in this right here, 3x squared, x is negative 1, plus 6xy. So once you do that substitution, it's not too terrible. You get a negative 1. So I get that the slope of my tangent line at that point should be a negative 1. So let me show you what I meant about substituting it early. So right here is where I found my derivative. So let me just copy this down. Okay, so here was my first step where I found the derivative, right? And I want the slope of the tangent line, or I want to find the derivative's value at negative 1, 1. It told me to differentiate and plus implicitly. I did. Now plug in your point. So 6 times x times y plus 3 times x squared dy dx is what I'm solving for, plus 3y squared, y is 1, 6x is negative 1, y is 1, equals 0. Don't forget your dy dx is, right, because that's what you're solving for. Okay. So let's just do computation. So I'm basing my answer, because I want a numerical answer, a value, I'm going to base my work on more computation than I am more algebra. If you needed the algebraic dy dx, then sure, keep going with your algebra. But if you need a value or computation, go to your numbers as early as you want. As soon as you find the derivative, right? you can plug in your values. Okay, so this is negative 6 plus 3 dy dx plus 3 um, minus 6 dy dx equals 0. Now this is just a linear equation. If you're solving for x or dy dx or m or p, whatever that variable is, right? Right now I'm just solving for dy dx, so those three of them minus six of them gives me negative three of them equals that adds the circled numbers negative six positive three or negative three so i'm going to add three to the other side i'm just solving an equation here so dy dx equals negative one because you would divide both sides by negative three so i get the same answer and that's just more computation okay so you do have some options if you know, this one didn't necessarily ask you for this algebraic dy dx, but if it did, certainly put that whole thing, right, or this one. But if it's just asking you for the, to differentiate implicitly at a point, your answer is a number, so you can go to your values as soon as you differentiate. I hope you found this video on the beginnings of implicit differentiation helpful. We'll talk about the second derivative and a couple more interesting derivatives or more difficult derivatives in the second video for this. So watch out for that one. All right, thanks for watching.